So up until June 2019, in my professional life, which has been probably about 20 years now, uh, almost 16 of which has been running PRDBD, I, I was living with an inner thoughts, an inner turmoil and an inner voice that, that would so often speak to me in ways in which I was made to feel that I'm a bit of a fraud, that I'm going to get found out, that my business is going to collapse, that I should stop doing the things that I'm doing and maybe I should think about doing a career um, in a different industry, doing something very different. Just maybe I'm just not cut out for working in the in this area, in this industry around user experience and customer experience and, and optimization. And this is something I, I just live with. It would the fear that I would feel when I was before stepping out up onto a stage to do a presentation, um, the, the fear so before going into say a presentation or a pitch, that voice in my head would continuously just just chip away at me and just say, Paul, Paul, this, you're gonna get found out. You're gonna get found out. And, and this was this is imposter syndrome. This was living with imposter syndrome. And over the last five years, on a few public talks that I've done and a few blog posts I've written on LinkedIn, I've I've shared some of my biggest learnings of imposter syndrome. And to, to just share a few things now, things that I've learned, things that things that I've passed on to other people is first of all to to realise that you're not alone. In, with having imposter syndrome, realizing that um, there are many, many famous people, sports people, movie stars, who, who openly share that they, they have imposter syndrome, they have this fear of failure. Um, also, it's, it's absolutely crucially important we talk to children about um, our, our own children, about their fears, their insecurities, what is stopping them from doing something different, from taking on a new class or a new study or joining a new group. What are their fears, what are their insecurities <clears throat> that are making them not do what, um, what, what, they're, what they're looking to do in their heart? Um, also, a big thing <clears throat> is for us to not compare ourselves to other people because it's, it's, it's a very futile thing to do. What we, what we should be doing is just looking at ourselves, looking at our own journey, looking back and thinking, where were we 12 months ago? How far have we come um, in, in 12 months? Comparing ourselves to other people, particularly in a professional environment, is, is just something that will never give us peace. It will never give us peace because everyone is on their own journey. Everyone has, has got to where they are for, for their own circumstances. And there's no point trying to strive to be like someone else or to have someone else's experience. We just need to strive to keep doing more for ourselves, to, to keep learning ourselves, to keep um, having, having an impact on other people and just doing, doing the right thing and, and living with humility. And then there's another, there's another big thing also. It's <clears throat> instead of us looking ahead um, uh, comparing ourselves to other people or looking ahead to people that we're striving to become or someone that's higher up the career ladder than us or someone that's, that's further on in their career progression um, on the path that we're looking to take. Instead of doing that, sometimes it's good for us to reflect on, well, what about the people that are kind of lower down the career ladder than us or that are younger than us, that, are, that have only just come in, into the industry? What is it that I'm doing that's inspiring them or that's helping them? So let's not look ahead and compare forward, but let's just look at and be, and be grateful for the fact that we've got an opportunity when we speak, when we write, when we share knowledge, when we share experiences and wisdom, we've got um, an ability to impact the lives of younger people and pass on our wisdom and our learnings to them so that they live their life um, with these incredible learnings from people that are more experienced and it can help shape their life, it can help accelerate their journey. And particularly with imposter syndrome, if younger people learn about how imposter syndrome is very real and, it, and that voice in our head can cause so much damage in terms of stopping us stepping outside of our comfort zone, when, when we learn about, when we learn to discern that voice in our head that is, that is wrong, that is deceptive, that's, that's a lie and that wants to keep us held back from stepping outside of our comfort zone, when we learn to contain it and discern it and to know that we shouldn't follow that voice in our head, then more and more people, younger people, uh, people of any age, more people when they have greater discernment to put that lying deception 
away and to not not live their life by the fears and insecurities that voice says more of us will step outside of our comfort zone we'll do things that we've never done before and we'll start to realize we have got so much incredible potential inside of us that we should no longer be held back by the fears and insecurities of what would be termed imposter syndrome that we're not good enough we shouldn't do that we need to stick to what we're good at and um, if we do try something different we're going to get found out because no, when we're, when we're doing this from the heart, we're not going to get found out. We're actually going to realise that we have got so much incredible potential inside of us that for many people can often be locked away. And, um, and God just wants us to open up and exploit the potential and the gifts that he's given us that, that he's calling us to do. So praise God.